this video, I want to discuss how we can think about visualizing one forms. And the reason for doing this is remember that dual vectors are a type of one form. So the idea behind visualizing one forms is such that what we're sort of aiming to do is to convert integration into counting. This might seem a little bit abstract, but that's basically the idea behind all methods of visualizing one forms. And the example we're going to be using here is how can we calculate the work done by moving a charged particle through a field? And we're going to imagine that this is a uniform field in the x direction, as I've indicated here by the green arrow. So in vector notation, we can work out the work done by minus q times the integral across the curve L of the electric field dotted with the differential line element dL. So q here, just for completeness, is the charge. Sometimes I miss off the minus 1 here, so sorry if that conflicts with previous videos. And we're imagining that there is some curve that we are moving our charged particle along in the field. And so in the vector way of thinking about things, what we do at each point in the field is we take the dot product between the electric field, which is a uniform field in the x direction, and the differential line element dl. And so we work out the proportion of the electric field which is aligned with the differential line element dl. And we do that continuously along our curve. And so you can see that when I actually try and work this out, it's hard visually to work out what sort of number this might actually yield. An alternative way of thinking about this sort of integral is through the use of one forms. So what we do in visualizing one forms is we imagine a family of surfaces. I'm saying surfaces here because remember there is a z direction as well, but I'm only choosing to draw the plane in x, y. And each of these parallel surfaces here represents a equipotential. So along this line, v, the potential is equal to let's say 2 volts. Then for the second case here, v is equal to 1, and then finally v is equal to 0. So now what we can actually see here is that we can quite quickly see what our result should be. Essentially, we're just counting the number of surfaces that our line, which we drag our particle along, actually pierces. And so what we see here is that we pass through one, two, three, but the difference between the initial point and the final one is, well, really, we're just going through two and a half lots of these sort of surfaces of this sort of depth of one volt. And so the work done here is approximately minus 2.5 Q joules. So how do we do that? Well, essentially what we did is we worked out the work done by taking minus Q, the charge, integrated with this one form, which I'm just gonna write as sort of epsilon here, along the curve L. And because of the number of surfaces that that actually pierced, we worked out visually that that was gonna be approximately 2.5 times Q. So we can see by this technique of visualizing here one forms as a sort of a family of surfaces that we are actually able to visually determine what integrals are going to be approximately. And that's a benefit over the vector approach where it's very difficult to see, to visualize exactly what the value of a dot product will be and hence it's very difficult to work out what the integral will be along a curve. So what functional form does our one form here actually take? Well, we can work it out. Essentially, because our electric field is only in the x direction, our one form is just given by ex, the magnitude of the electric field, times the differential element dx. And the idea is that if we actually carry out this operation down here of actually integrating a one form, essentially all we need to remember is that we're just counting the number of surfaces that our line actually passes through. Okay, so given that we know how to visualize a one form as a family of surfaces, what about the particular basis for one forms? What are the fundamental elements that we can use 
to make any one form that we actually like. Firstly, let's start off by thinking about one potential basis for vectors. And here we know that we can use the basis vectors EY and EX. And e EY and EX are both of unit length. So this is one potential basis. Remember there are an infinite number of these type of bases, but we're picking really the most simple one. So what about a basis for our one forms? Well, essentially what we can do is we can imagine a family of parallel curves or parallel surfaces in the x direction, each of which is separated by one unit. So here it's two on the x axis and then it's three. And then similarly, in the y direction, we can imagine a family of surfaces, again, separated by one unit. So here we, again, we have two on the y-axis and then three on the y-axis. And because we are increasing in the x direction in this direction, these surfaces actually have an orientation. And so we indicate on these surfaces the positive direction. So here in the x direction, these family of surfaces correspond to the one form dx. And in the y direction, these family of surfaces correspond to the one form dy. Okay, so how can we use this basis to produce any one form that we actually like? Well, imagine that we want to produce a one form which is given by dx plus dy. What might this look like? Well, you can probably guess here, essentially what it's going to look like is it's going to be a family of surfaces which are actually at 45 degrees to the coordinate axes. So dx plus dy just looks like that. And you can imagine that if we put different numbers other than 1 in front of dx or dy, then we could pivot these family of surfaces in any particular orientation that we'd like. Let's now think about a slightly more complicated example, only slightly so. Let's imagine that we have a charge and around that point charge we have a sort of family of surfaces of equipotentials. And that might look something like this. And now what we can do is, using this sort of picture, is we can imagine what sort of work done we would be required to move a unit charge from, let's say, here to here along the path that is indicated. Well, here we can see that the work done by integrating our unit charge, so I'm just going to miss out Q and just put minus here, along the curve L of our one-form field is just going to be given by something like, well, we're passing through here on the curve, we're passing through 1 and then 2, but the points are actually separated by roughly two layers of this surface. So we can see that the work done here is going to be roughly uh, minus 2.5, and I, I should have put joules before. So here we can see that our field, our one-form field, is actually kind of a type of onion. So you can imagine a one-form field as a family of surfaces in an onion. And remember that one forms actually can be generalized to higher dimensions, but in three dimensions at least we can think about one forms as a kind of onion. 